Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have here with me Sister Joanna. And Sister Joanna will be blessing our hearts with a reading from the psalm. But before we go to her, let's go to our Father in prayer. Our Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, this Sabbath day, Lord, and we just thank you for the privilege of delivering this message, your word, to those who are hearing, and we pray that you will put your, your spirit upon our mouths and uh, your spirit upon the ears of those who are listening, Lord, and you will cause this message to be the very message for those who hear it and the message that ministers to them in every way. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for just being with us on every day, and especially this Sabbath day. And we give you all the honor, all the praises, and all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Now, Sister Joanna. Actually, I'm going to do a reading from Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him, as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. And he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Sister Joanna. And now to our good news message today. And, and today's message will come from John chapters chapters 11 through 13 and the, <clears throat> the the parts in that the titles in that uh chapter we will cover the death and resurrection of lazarus conspiracy to kill jesus mary anoints jesus jesus enters jerusalem greeks seek jesus jesus foretells his death the lord's supper jesus washes his disciples feet and Jesus predicts his portrayal. And we'll begin with the introduction. Our previous message discussed the adulterous woman. Jesus is the light of the world. The truth shall make you free. Healing the man born blind. Jesus affirms his deity. Parable of the good shepherd. And Jesus asserts his deity. Today's message will review the death and resurrection of Lazarus. Conspiracy to kill Jesus. Mary, Mary anoints, I'm sorry, anoints Jesus. Jesus enters Jerusalem. Greeks seek Jesus. Jesus foretells his death. The Lord's Supper. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And Jesus predicts his betrayal. And we'll begin with the death and resurrection of Lazarus. Sister Joanna will read. And John Chapter 11, verses 1 through 57. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters went, sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not to the end in death, to end in death, but for the glory of God, 
so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, so that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. When she had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. And now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man also from dying? So Jesus again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb, and now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not see, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. Therefore, the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council and were saying, what are we doing? For this man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people and that the whole nation not perish. Now, he did not say this on his own initiative, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but in order that he might also gather together into one, the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they planned together to kill him. Therefore, Jesus no longer continued to walk publicly among the Jews, but went away from there to the country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up to Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover to purify themselves. So they were seeking for Jesus and were saying to one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he was to report it so that they might seize him. I have a comment mm. um, before you do the supporting scripture. Okay. As I was reading this and Jesus came to the tomb and, and he ordered, move away the stone. So this is really interesting to me because Jesus could have moved the stone away himself, right? But he called upon the human arm to do that for him. And so... As we live our lives in Christ here, he will call upon us, the human arm, to do his work. Amen. So Amen. I just thank the Lord for that revelation. Thank you, Joanna. And now for supporting scripture on what she just read. <clears throat> that is Joanna. Um, Romans 4, verse 7 reads, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. How blessed is he who's trans, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Psalm 32, verse 1. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Daniel 12, verse 2. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Excuse me. 2 Corinthians 2, verses 15 and 16. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to the one an aroma from death to death to the other an aroma from life to life. 
and who is adequate for these things. Okay, now we go to Mary anoints Jesus. Sister Joanna. John uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 50. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples who was intending to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to poor people? Now he said this, not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was put into it. Therefore, Jesus said, let her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews then learned that he was there and they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things to him. So the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify about him. For this reason also the people went and met him because they heard that he had performed this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. Now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to to worship at the feast. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul has become troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your Son. Then a voice came out of heaven, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. 
So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice has not come for my sake, but for your sakes. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. The crowd then answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ is to remain forever. How can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, For a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and he went away and hid himself from them. But though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason, they could not believe. For Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes, and he hardened their heart, so that they would not see with their eyes and perceive with their heart and be converted and I heal them. These things Isaiah said because he saw his glory and he spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue for they loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. And Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me does not believe in me, but in him who sent me. He who sees me sees the one who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my sayings and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Amen. Now, <clears throat> before we go to the support in Scripture, uh, there was, um, when Jesus was about to enter Jerusalem, the, the whole crowd was came out and they yelled, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes. And um, now this, this was comparable to the, the traditions in the ancient world of people having gone to war and had victory and and uh and what would that what they did they would send a runner back to the home city to say well you know the king has victory and the king's come riding in on a, a nice the best horse in the that they have uh probably usually a white horse and donned with uh, attire and and uh and to to be honored to be honored as one who 
who has had victory. Now, but Christ is, had a different kind of victory. Christ came to save the lives of men of sin, to save us from sin. And he came with a fold of a donkey. He came in on the fold of the donkey. But the people recognized that he was, this was a victory uh, uh, trip for him in, into Jerusalem, the, 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 the city of Jerusalem, who was the, the capital of, for the Israelites at that time. And so, so Jesus came in on, on the donkey, and, and we know from other scriptures reading, he went in when he, he went in and, and he cleaned out the, those who were selling in the temple and, 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 and those kinds of things. But point is, point is this, that um, when, when the um, um, kings of the world, Norman, they came in after they had victory, they would come in and on a, on, on a horse, a, a nice white horse. And of course, Jesus had a donkey. And, um, but uh, uh, there was, there was another distinction uh, about them. And yes, they would be honored uh, in riding into town because they had had victory in the other cities and and it's just, just some more information that I'd like to share with you but maybe later we can we can I can catch up with that but let's go to support inscription now and may I add something go ahead um in in um comp which isn't comparable to the king's coming they were proud they mm. came in pride you know right. but jesus came on a humble donkey mm -hmm. yes victory was coming but he 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 came in humility mm -hmm. Amen. yes mm -hmm. the crowd was shouting hosanna bless Amen. is him in the name of the lord yes okay and uh and and the, the this is a good news message and 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 the good news is in in greek and <clears throat> the greek words Euangelion is the word for good news. The good news of, of the Jesus coming is, is what these messages are about. Uh, the, all the gospel message, that, that good news means gospel. That is, that is our word. We translate that good news as gospel. Okay. Amen. And so, and, and uh, getting back to support and scripture on, on that, all that message that was read. We begin in Mark 14, read verse 3 and 4. While he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper and reclining at the table, there came a woman with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume of pure nard, and she broke the vial and poured it over his head. But some were indignant, remarking to one another, why was this perfume, why has this perfume been waste? And Song of Solomon, verse one through three. Now, if you note in, in the gospel, in the message that we just read, it was <clears throat> um, the guy who, uh, oh Lord, I can't think of his name now. Judas. Judas, who said that because he was carrying a money bag and he, he would like it to be sold, add more money to the bag so he could piffle off it. And uh, so <laughs> he's the one that said, "Why had asked? Why wasn't this sold for a good bit of money, and and the money given to the poor, or something like that?" But he he didn't want to give it to the poor. So let's go to Song of Solomon, uh, chapter one, verse three. Your oils have a pleasing fragrance. Your name is like purified oil. Therefore, the maidens love you. Amen. Amen. And no Mary's anointing Jesus in that regard. Song of Solomon, verse one, verse 12. While the king was at his table, my perfume gave forth its fragrance. First John five, verse nine. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For the testimony of God is this, that he has testified concerning his son. And that's what Jesus Throughout his message, he was trying to tell the people, like he God sent him. 
This is not his word. This is not his testimony. This is not his power, but it's, it, this is God. He, it is God who's doing this work. First John 4, verse 5. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. Romans 14, verse 9. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 36. You fool, that which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Amen. And, and now we'll go to our next reading, the Lord's Supper. Sister Joanna. John 13, verses 1 through 38. Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During the supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garments and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. This is, uh, I have a comment here. This is something that he's saying to all of us. If Jesus does not wash us, we have no part of him. If we do not accept him as our Lord and Savior and the blood of his sacrifice, which cleanses us and makes us acceptable before God, we have no part with him if we do not, if we do not let him wash us. Amen. Yes. So then Simon Peter said to him, well, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but it, is com but it is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. I have a comment I'd like to include, comparable to what uh, Sister Joanna already said, uh, but for us, Washing each other's feet is that that was a gesture for Jesus of, of us taking care of each other, keeping each other clean. Now we do that with prayer. We do that with prayer. When when uh, Pastor Steve and 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 Sister P had you know uh, injuries, and we we prayed for them, and 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 we washed their feet in that. That would be tantamount to washing their feet is to give them to give all of this to God and say, Lord, come and heal Sister Pete, come and heal Pastor Steve. We need them here with us. We you, we, we need their contribution to this ministry. And so so we wash each other's feet by standing up, standing up for them and praying for them and, and giving them to God or, or even giving them. Uh, a, a passage, a scripture saying, uh, yes, pastor, this is what God is saying to you through this. And that's washing each other's feet. Amen. So verse 12, so when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? 
You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Amen. For I gave you an example that you also that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I do not speak of all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but it is that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it comes to pass, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. When Jesus had said this, he became troubled in spirit and testified and said, truly, truly, I say to you that one of you will betray me. The disciples began looking at one another at a loss to know of which one he was speaking. There was reclining on Jesus's bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. So Simon Peter gestured to him and said to him, tell us who it is of whom he is speaking. He, leaning back thus on Jesus' bosom, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus then answered, that is the one for whom I shall dip the morsel and give it to him. So when he had dipped the morsel, he took and gave it to Judas the son of Simon Iscariot. After the morsel, Satan then entered into him. Therefore, Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. Now, no one of those reclining at the table knew for what purpose he had said this to him. For some were supposing, because Judas had the money box, that Jesus was saying to him, buy the things we have need of for the feast, or else that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he went out immediately, and it was night. Therefore, when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him immediately. Excuse Little me, I have a comment I'd like to make. Notice when it said, as when, Jesus, when Judas went out, when he went out and it was night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was night. It was the, the darkness prevails at night. No light. It was night because he knew Judas was, it was a, it was a dark feat that he was about to do go uh, uh, give him, turn him over to the, the, the chief priests and, 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 uh, for, and they would condemn him. He knew that they were ready to condemn him to death and that's what he came there to do. And so, mm -hmm. so that, was, that was, Jesus was finally ready to fulfill the role that he came he was born into this world to do, and that was it. Thank you, Joanna. In verse 33, little children, I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, 
Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I go, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow later. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you right now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, a rooster will not crow until you deny me three times. Amen. And, and truly, um, Jesus knew that not only would Peter lay down his life for him, but we all will. That's, that's part of what being here, belonging to him and, and accepting him is laying down our life for the Lord and for our God. And however, what he didn't say, it gives us our life, really. That laying down our life gives us life, gives us the life that we have or the life that we've already been given. We, we lay it down. And now for more support in scripture. Um, <clears throat> the real support in scripture. Luke 22, verse 3. And Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the twelve. Mark 14, verse 18. As they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, that one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Matthew 26, verse 23. And he answered, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. Matthew 26, 14. Then one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot, Iscariot went to the chief priests. Matthew 26, 34, Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, that this very night before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He was talking to Peter then. <clears throat> you and, know, it's interesting to me, um, the difference between Judas and Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay, Judas betrayed Jesus. Um, for good, you know, and it had eternal consequences. Um, Peter, Jesus prophesied that Peter would deny him three times, but yet look at the difference. It just shows us that, yes, we fall, mm -hmm. we make mistakes, mm -hmm. but the redemption that Jesus gives us can cover that. Um, but what Judas did was just so horrific, that, that betrayal, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I don't know the ultimate end of Judas other than I know he his life ended, his natural life ended then. I don't know whatever happened in his heart. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it did say in the scripture that Satan entered him. And so... More than once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. More than once. Yes. The, the Bible gives an account or gives a couple of accounts of what happened to Judas. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have them in, my, in memory right now, but mm -hmm. we can find them. And so now we're at the conclusion. And uh, in the conclusion, I will review some of the main uh, portions of the scripture that we've covered. I mean, let's begin with the death of, of Lazarus. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus has spoken of his death but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus, excuse me, then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> He's dead. It's not just asleep. And now let's go to Mary anoints Jesus. 
uh, John uh, 12, verses 1 through 3. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Amen. And now the Lord's Supper. And John 13 verses 1 through 4, it reads, Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. Um, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garment and taking a towel, he girded himself. And we know what he did after that. He girded himself and he he uh, washed the disciples' feet. And, and we talked about that. We commented on that gesture and how we are to wash each other's feet. We pray for uh, one another. And and we clean us. We When we fall among us, we, we lift each other up in prayer. And amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Heavenly Father. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this message, this wonderful message that you've given us today. We just, we just thank you for blessing us uh, with, with the opportunity to deliver this message. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of those who you brought in to listen and to hear this message and, and bless them with the words that you have prepared for them, for each individual, Lord. And we we just thank you and we give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance before you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs>